In today's lesson, you're going to learn about how to create motions in your digital story. There are three kinds of motions. There is zoom in, zoom out, which makes the picture move further away or get closer to the viewer. There's pan, which moves left to right or right to left. And there's tilt, which moves the picture top to bottom or bottom to top. I'll first begin by showing you how to create a zoom in or zoom out. First, go to your timeline, select the picture that you'd like to edit. Then you're going to go up to the top right corner and you're going to click on these two right angles symbol that when you put your mouse over it, it says cropping. Click on it and it will give you more control in the preview. Make sure that you have Ken Burns button selected and is in blue. And you'll notice that there are two boxes. There's a solid box which has the word start in the bottom left corner. And there's an end box which has the word end in the bottom left corner. To create a zoom out, you make the start position box smaller, box, create a larger box, for the end position that shows the whole picture. This will create a zoom out. If you back the playhead up and press the play button in the preview, you'll notice that it starts with a focus on the jellyfish body and then zooms out to show the tentacles and a wider picture. Now, let's do the opposite. There's a quick solution. You'll notice that there's a symbol with two arrows rotating in a circle. And when you put your mouse over it, it has a help that says swap the start and end area. So if you simply click this, you'll notice that the end and start positions have swapped. So in this case, when we preview it, it will go from a wider view of the jellyfish and its extended tentacles to zoom in on and focus on the body of the jellyfish. Let's preview. Okay, now we're going to create a pan. Pan moves left to right or right to left. So again, begin by selecting the image that you want to create a motion on. Then go to the pre go above the preview and click on the cropping symbol. Make sure the Ken Burns button is in blue. And it will show you two boxes, start and end. Now, the trick to a pan is you want to make sure that you have the horizontal top and bottom edges of the two boxes start and end and often you can just layer them on top of each other those two top and bottom edges. This can sometimes be a little counterintuitive. You'll notice that there's an arrow which indicates the direction in which you would think the picture is going to move. So you would think that the surfer is going to look like he's moving to the right it's the picture that's moving to the right, but you want to create the illusion that the surfer is moving to the left, so you have to do the opposite. Watch when I preview. Okay, so let's switch the directions and show you what I mean by it can be counterintuitive. I'm going to press the play again. Watch what it does. Now it should look like you would think that the, the surfer would be moving in a forward motion, but instead it's going to be looking like he's moving backwards. So, be careful. Don't just set these to a default. You may need to use the swap start and end boxes to reverse the direction like so. Play with the sizing of the boxes to make sure that your focal point stays in frame all right, our last motion that I'll demonstrate is tilt. Tilt moves up and down or down to up. In this case, I have an example of a surfer who is falling down the surface face of a wave. So I want to create the illusion that he's going from the top of a wave, falling down to the transition lower, flatter part of the wave. So to do that, again, you always start by selecting the picture you want to edit, go to the cropping symbol, Make sure the Ken Burns button is selected, and then you'll see the start and end boxes. Now again, this arrow can be confusing, so don't always trust it. To create a tilt, 
you want to line up the side vertical edges of the start and end boxes so that they almost layer up on each other. However, you can create one box that's either smaller or larger than the other by extending the boxes area that it's displaying a little further out. You can also move them down, make them closer together so that it creates less of a falling motion so that you don't lose some of your focal point when you begin. Like for instance, right now, you'll notice that I'm cutting off the top of the surfer's head. Uh, we probably don't want that. We want to show the surfer the whole time, but you have to make the decision about how you want to show your focal point and how you want to create the illusion of motion. The simplest way is to keep those sides lined up. Let's preview. That's good, but I didn't feel like it was really having enough motion. I want to create a diagonal motion. So I'm going to create a starting position further to the left and an end position that's more to the right. Let's preview and see what happens. Oh, well, he's going backwards, isn't he? Okay, so we need to swap it. Now it looks like he's surfing, falling diagonally down the face of the wave. Okay, remember, you need to use all three motions in the film. Tilt, zoom, and pan. 